Hello, I'm Alex Jones, a syndicated radio and television host based in Austin, Texas. And for many years, I've been exposing the criminal activities of the global elite, also known as the New World Order. And this collection of power-mad megalomaniacs has been using a successive string of terrorist events to usher in their corrupt world government, a world government where populations, their own documents show, will be herded into compact cities, will be issued national ID cards, and yes, even implantable microchips. But in this film, we're first going to look at some historical examples of tyrants and governments, oligarchies alike, using crises, in many cases, terrorist events that they themselves perpetrate against their population, against their own bureaucracies to create a crisis, to get the people to exchange liberty for so-called security. We're going to get some historical examples of this, going back to Nero burning Rome to blame it on the Christians, and then fast-forwarding to Adolf Hitler burning the Reichstag shortly after being elected, the governmental building, to blame it on his political enemies, to destroy their Bill of Rights and Constitution, and to announce martial law. Then we'll look at the Northwoods document from 1962, where the Joint Chiefs of Staff and many other sectors of the federal government to the highest levels were planning to blow up airliners full of Americans, full of American citizens. Then we're going to fast forward to the federal government training the drivers, cooking the bomb in the horrible attack, the first attack on the World Trade Center in 1993. They were caught doing it. It was in the news, but got brushed aside. The FBI was caught on videotape admitting it, bombing the World Trade Center complex to get their agenda through. Then, of course, 1995 with the Oklahoma City bombing. Again, staggering amounts of evidence, an absolute proven fact that the government had prior knowledge and was instrumental in engineering the attacks on the Alfred P. Murrow building in Oklahoma City. And then, of course, none of you have to be reminded of the tragic events in 2001 on September 11th. My friends, the government just didn't have prior knowledge of September 11th Al-Qaeda attacks. They actually funded, trained, protected, coddled, shepherded Al-Qaeda into this country, trained many of the terrorists at the Pensacola Naval Air Station, USA, threatened FBI and defense intelligence officers who tried to stop Al-Qaeda, threatened them with arrest. Bush signed, now public document, W199I, two months before September 11th, threatening them with arrest if they tried to stop Al-Qaeda. And now his approval rating went from 45% to 
to 90 plus percent. The USA Patriot Act that has just eviscerated the Bill of Rights and Constitution has been passed, and yes, it pertains to Americans. Their cashless society, compact city, control grid is falling into place. The people were preconditioned before all of these terrorist attacks to give up their liberties, and then the government will be able to protect them from terrorists. Look at who really stands to gain from this. Look who has the motive. You know, we tripled the FBI's anti-terrorism funding in 1996 after Oklahoma City. They didn't protect us in 2001 from Al-Qaeda, did they? No, they funded and protected them. Took their names out of the customs computers. Took their names out of the airport computers. Nurse bin Laden back to health in a U.S. hospital. You're going to see all the evidence. We had a war on drugs. There's triple the heroin, double the cocaine on our streets. Government's own numbers than there was eight years ago. Our prison population has gone from 1.3 million to 6.5 million in the last two years, going into 2002, with the numbers only expanding. We had a war on poverty. There's more poverty. A war on illiteracy. There's more illiteracy. Now they're going to have this war on terrorism. You're going to see only escalations in it because the government only gets more power, more control over our lives, more funding after each horrible event. A dozen people die at the first World Trade Center attack, 168, Oklahoma City, 3,000 plus, the second World Trade Center attack by the government. And now they're telling us, get ready for more attacks. And yes, if we don't take microchips, if we don't accept a microchip population, then we're going to get attacked again. And already the states admit they'd already been implementing a national ID card scheme. And then, of course, the total goal. Why the New World Order is pushing all of this. We know they want tyranny. We know this global government is behind it. They're now publicly talking about a New World Order. How did they get all this? And what's their final goal? A world population reduction of 80%, everyone crammed into compact cities, and yes, the United Nations is preparing to release mass plagues on the earth because the elite want the life extension technology for themselves. They know that technology is a double-edged sword that can be used to empower humanity or that can be used to totally enslave humanity. And they know they're in a race against time, that their window of opportunity is closing. And they've got to dehumanize us. They've got to enslave us here on the global plantation now or they're going to lose control. The New World Order is run by absolutely ruthless individuals, hell-bent on dehumanizing the entire human community, obsessed with total control. These megalomaniacal Satanists are absolutely sworn to the creation of a worldwide tyranny called the New World Order. This is the evidence, and it is conclusive. 911, the road to tyranny. War. Empires are built and maintained by it. Populations rally during time of war. Nothing centralizes power like it on Earth. All throughout history, leaders have used this unifying force to control populations. Humans instinctively shift into mindless groupthink when faced by an outside threat, whether real or manufactured. But now, in the 21st century, the system of control continues, but with more sophistication. You see, if there isn't an enemy to fight, you have to manufacture one. In AD 64, on the 10th of August, Nero, Emperor of Rome, set the city ablaze while he fiddled. You see, he had a problem. The Christians were getting too popular. Of course, after he torched Rome, the people were more than happy to rip them limb from limb in the arena. The persecution of the Christians is only one of many ancient examples of governments persecuting populations after creating crises. On February 15, 1898, treason was committed by William McKinley's Navy when they blew up their own ship in Havana Harbor to create a pretext for war with the Spanish government. Adolf Hitler had already been elected president, but he wanted to abolish the chancellery and make himself fewer. And to do that, he had to create enough of a crisis to create massive levels of fear in the population so that they would willingly lay down their republic and give it into the hands of this monster. On the night of February 27, 1933, Adolf Hitler's stormtroopers, historical documents now conclusively show from Nazi archives, burned the Reichstag government building to the ground. 
A wave of arrests then took place across the Reich as the Fuhrer told the people, yes, I will protect you. You will have a utopia world. Everything will be given to you by the state as long as you offer total fealty and support.